Over the holidays, I was thinking about how simple many of the most powerful technologies in the world are at their foundation. Again and again, the pattern is the same. A small number of basic rules, a limited set of primitives, and then once those primitives are combined at scale, something emerges that feels limitless. Two examples stood out immediately. One, computers, and two, computer screens, specifically color on screens. At its core, a computer is an extremely simple machine. It stores a zero or a one. It reads what is stored, it changes what is stored. That is a full set of what a computer can do. There's nothing more fundamentally happening. The power does not come from complexity at the base layer. The power comes from repetition, speed, and scale. When you store enough zeros and ones, and when you can read and change them fast enough, entire software systems emerge. From that simple structure come operating systems, the internet, artificial intelligence models, ride-sharing platforms, and almost every modern tool we rely on today. The same principle appears in computer screens and color we see. When you look at the world, it feels like there are endless colors. The screen in front of you appears to display an infinite variation, yet every pixel is built from only three primary colors, red, green, and blue. Each of those colors is represented digitally with a small number of zeros and ones. In most modern displays, each color channel uses 8 bits. That means each channel can express 256 intensity levels. When you combine those three channels, you get 2 to the 24th power possible combinations. That equals 16,777,216 distinct colors. Three basic color inputs, a simple rule, over 16 million possible outcomes. A tiny design choice creates a massive expressive space of different colors. There is a well-known mathematical example that shows the same phenomenon even more starkly. It is called Rule 30, discovered and studied by Stephen Wolfram. Rule 30 is a one-dimensional system with only two states. A cell is either on or off, black or white. Each new row is generated by looking only at three cells above it and applying a single fixed rule. There is no randomness, no external input, no complexity added. Yet when you run rule 30 forward in time, the pattern becomes chaotic. It looks random. It becomes almost impossible to predict locally, even though the system is fully deterministic. The rule never changes. The inputs stay minimal. Complexity emerges purely from repetition. This overturned a long-held intuition. Simple rules do not always produce simple outcomes. In many cases, they produce outcomes so complex, they appear irreducible. Bitcoin fixed this exact same pattern. Bitcoin is a simple technology built on top of computers, networks, and cryptography. At its core, it is a ledger. It is money that is perfectly scarce and immutable with a fixed supply of 21 million Bitcoin. The system performs one primary function. It moves Bitcoin from one address to another over a communications channel. Ownership is equally simple. Control comes from holding a private key or a set of private keys. That's it. No accounts, no permissions, no intermediaries. If you hold the key, you control the Bitcoin. What makes this profound is the scale behind that simplicity. A Bitcoin private key is a 256-bit number. That means there are two to the 256th power possible private keys. That number is so large that it defies human intuition. It exceeds the number of atoms in the observable universe by an unimaginable margin. The probability of guessing someone else's key is effectively zero. So Bitcoin ownership reduces to a simple rule. Possession of a secret number grants control over digital scarcity. Mathematics replaces trust. Computation replaces institutions. Bitcoin scarcity is equally simple and equally strict. New Bitcoin is issued on a fixed schedule defined in software. Roughly every 10 minutes, a new block is added to the ledger. The amount of Bitcoin created in each block halves every 210,000 blocks, approximately every four years. This process continues until issuance asymptotically approaches zero and the supply caps at 21 million Bitcoin. 
There's no committee. There's no discretion. There's no ability to accelerate or delay the schedule. The rule is enforced by every participant running the software. Monetary policy becomes a property of code. This matters because civilizations organize around money. Money is the base layer of economic coordination. It determines how capital is allocated. It influences time preference. It shapes incentives. Human capital, physical capital, and financial capital all respond to the properties of the monetary system beneath it. When money is easy to create, capital flows towards short-term behavior. When money reliably holds value across time, capital flows toward long-term planning. Infrastructure changes, institutions change, social norms change. Bitcoin introduces a monetary foundation that is simple, predictable, and global. A fixed supply, secure ownership, permissionless transfer. These are small design choices at the base layer, yet they open an enormous space for second order effects. Just as computers turn bits into entire digital economies, and just as three color channels generate millions of visual outcomes, Bitcoin turns simple monetary rules into complex human systems. This is how foundational technologies work. They look unimpressive at first glance, they feel almost trivial in isolation. Their power reveals itself over time as layers are built on top and as people adapt their behavior to the new constraints. Bitcoin is a very simple idea, a ledger, a key, a fixed supply. Yet the consequences of discovering a superior form of money extend into nearly every domain of society. These consequences are broad, they are difficult to predict, and they are likely to be profound. Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you next time.